I started volunteering at the veterinary hospital about a year ago, and I would always go and just visit the animals, you know, and pet them. But I really got into it because I've always wanted to be a vet, so I asked them if I could volunteer, and I pick up poop and all that gross stuff, but I get to do other stuff. I get to help the animals. I get to hold them. And then we're going to cut around it. What we'll happened to her? It took a big turn. Okay. For my first time, actually, I helped the dog do the water treadmill. This helps them give them strength because he had had surgery a couple months ago on his bones. <laughs> He's so cute. I don't want to be one of those teenagers that just sits on their butt all day and goes on MySpace and watch TV. I like to be active. I like to go out and do things. I like to be involved in sports. I like to help out. I like to volunteer and all that. I, I like playing lacrosse a lot, and that's just my main focus besides schoolwork. Project Citizen was this project that Miss Fowler introduced to us, and we remember hearing it at the beginning of the year, and we're like, oh man, because we're not, we didn't like the idea of a group project, there's our whole class working on it. So we want to focus on problems in our community. So what constitutes community for us? What constitutes community? Maybe in the Evergreen School District. Evergreen School District. Uh, Vancouver. The Vancouver city yeah. itself. Our school. Our school, Shahela. After a while, I kind of learned it was like about enforcing a policy that was like kind of big in our community. And that's definitely a good thing. Any ideas, just start throwing them out. There is no bad idea. Uh, maybe start schools later. Start school later? Yeah. Okay. Alex. Uh, maybe have healthier foods in schools, like maybe in Shahela. Oh, we need like a prevention program, yeah. like drugs. Uh, don't let sex offenders live so close to schools. Okay, so we have this list here, and it's pretty diverse, isn't it? So this is what we're going to do. We're going to split up in three groups. You need to pick the one problem you feel strongest about. Healthier school lunches. I'm starting school later. How are you going to convince those 20-some people in our class that school starting later should be the problem they should care about. What are you going to tell them? Because everybody's really tired in first period, including the teacher. I was like, what if you were walking home and then yes. you know that this house, there's a like, level three sex offender there, and you're then like quickly concerned and fear that he's gonna come out and grab you and like. Okay, so in, in Washington, Ohio, every million person, there's 712 offenders. That's a lot. That's, That's, wow. That's great. Okay, so you came up with a slogan. That's what you're going to start off with? Like, that's your hook? Yeah. Do you want to wake up 100 pounds heavier than you are today? So is it possible that our little class could ban trans fats in lunches? Is that possible? I think if we get government support, we can. How are you going to convince the school, school board? Food is like what we eat every day, and so it's like affecting our everyday lives. So you're saying that this, your, your selection of the problem has a a stronger impact on your lives, daily yeah. lives, yeah. day to day lives. I mean, life. what we're yeah. doing now, which is eating unhealthy food, is affecting us now. And, you know, if we continue to eat all this food, you know, it's going to negatively affect us in the future. What do you guys think you can do as eighth graders? How can you enact the change that, and, and create a policy that would change that? I think if we just back up our information with really strong statistics, then I think we'll convince them. More than 12 and a half million Americans have coronary heart disease, and more than 500,000 die each year from it. That makes CHD one of the leading causes of death in the United States. Yeah, See? Sucks. Our problem that we want to face is that we believe that sexual um, offenders are too clo too close to be living to the schools. Okay, well you have to consider some factors here. You can't just assume that he's gonna go and rape or molest a child right then and there. We're not saying that all sexual offenders are going to offend again. And we're not saying you should live your life in fear. But you should take the right precautions to make sure that it's not going to happen. Even if you do push them, like, to live maybe five miles away from the school, they have a car, don't they? What we want to do is eliminate or reduce the amount of trans fat that our school provides us. I mean, what if you woke up 30 years from now and found yourself 100 pounds overweight? Would you like that? No. So you're saying that trans fats are going to affect us in 30 years, but sexual offenders, that's affecting us now. Not everyone's going to get molested or raped, but by doing this, we can help prevent deaths. 
Raise your hands high. Ooh. Well done. Heavens. Yes. Healthier food in school wins out. Kayla looks annoyed. <laughs> we picked using trans fats as our whole policy because every single person is affected by trans fat. The United States has a huge problem with obesity, and so it all has to start at a young age, where you get your habits. And so if you stop the habits at a young age and stop all the fat intake at a young age, then maybe we can start to reduce the number of obese people in the United States. We conducted a survey. It was asking questions of if they knew what was in like, the students' lunches and if they knew about trans fats and how deadly it was. Do you know what trans fats are? Trans fats? Yeah. yeah. Would you support the banning of trans fats in the Evergreen School District? Probably, yes. For one, it's not healthy. In which case, it's the school district's responsibility to take care of the, to provide the kids with healthy meals. Would you support the banning of trans fats in the Evergreen School District? Sure. Be healthier, eat healthier. It's, it's, yeah, I support that. Our policy is to ban 80% of the trans fats in the Evergreen School District. Has something like this been proposed to you before? You know, to be honest, you're the first ones to care. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. That is so cool. Mm -hmm. How many of you? Eight. Eight is going back. We would like to have an 80% ban of trans fat in the Evergreen School District meals. We would never change a policy until we knew the cost impact on families because right. one of the things we struggle with is making sure that all kids get lunch. Yeah. Do you think that we could actually get this enacted? Uh, I think it's very possible you could get it enacted. Mm -hmm. um, and, and honestly, from where I'm sitting, I hope you can. Like, we're trying to change the world by taking out trans fats out of our Evergreen School District, and hopefully people will piggyback off of our idea. Going to D.C. to represent not only, like, our school or our district or even the state, but the whole country, I can't even, I mean, I still can't believe it. I think this is like a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, so I'm pretty excited about this. I think it's a big weight on our shoulders. Yeah, yeah. big responsibility. Yeah. It's like that Atlas guy. Do you know the guy carrying oh, the, the giant? Oh, the guy that carries the oh, world on yeah. his shoulders. I really want to win this. Yeah, and, too. you know, I really want to be able to make a difference, and I really want to get this policy enacted.